For the function f of x equals 1 divided by the quantity x plus 4 minus 5, we want to find the domain, range, horizontal asymptote, and vertical asymptote. Let's begin by determining the domain of the given rational function. To do this, it's easier to determine what values must be excluded from the domain. Because division by 0 is undefined, notice how f of x would be undefined when the quantity x plus 4 is equal to 0. So we need to exclude the value of x where we would have division by 0. So if we solve the equation x plus 4 equals 0, we would subtract 4 on both sides. So because x equals negative 4 would make the denominator equal to 0, and therefore the function is undefined at x equals negative 4, we must exclude negative 4 from the domain of the given function. And therefore the domain is all reals where x does not equal negative 4. To express this using interval notation, we'd have the open interval from negative infinity to negative 4 union, the open interval from negative 4 to infinity. By determining the restrictions on the domain, we can also determine the equations of the vertical asymptotes. Any value of x that makes the denominator equal to 0, but does not make the numerator equal to 0, will give us an equation of a vertical asymptote. So because x equals negative 4 makes the denominator equal to 0, but not the numerator, x equals negative 4 is the equation of the vertical asymptote. Any value of x that makes the denominator and the numerator equal to 0 would give the location of a hole in the graph rather than a vertical asymptote. Let's also sketch the vertical asymptote on the coordinate plane, which would be here. At this point, let's look at the graph on the graphing calculator. So we'll press y equals. I've already typed in the function to save some time. Notice how the quantity x plus 4 must be in parentheses. And now let's press zoom 6 to make sure we have the standard window and graph the function. Looking at the graph of the given function, notice how we do have a vertical line here, x equals negative 4, that the graph approaches, which is the vertical asymptote. Notice how the graph also has a horizontal asymptote here, which is a horizontal line the graph approaches. Before we determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote, let's look at the table of values. So let's press second window for table set. Let's have the table start be 0, enter, the change in the table by 1s, and now we'll press second graph. Let's go ahead and scroll up and notice that x equals negative 4, there's an error in the value of y1, which is the reason why we have negative 4 excluded from the domain of the given function. Now going back to the graph, to help us determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote, we want to see what y value or function value we will be approaching as we move to the right or move to the left. So let's go ahead and press trace. It's probably hard to see, but this point is 0 comma negative 4.75. And now let's arrow to the right and see what happens to the y value. As we move to the right, notice how the y value is approaching the value of negative 5 which is the reason why y equals negative 5 is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Of course, we can keep going, but I think it's fairly easy to see we are approaching the y value of negative 5. And the same thing would be true if we moved left along the graph. So going back to our work, we can say as x approaches positive infinity, or as x increases without bound, f of x approaches negative 5, it's also true that as x approaches negative infinity, or as x decreases without bound, f of x approaches negative 5, which is reason why y equals negative 5 is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. And now we want to find the range of the given function, which is a set of all possible outputs, or y values. To determine the range, let's analyze the given function f of x equals 1 over the quantity x plus 4 minus 5. Well, we just determined that as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative 5. Well, let's look closely what happens to just this fraction as x approaches infinity. As x approaches infinity or increases without bound, for this fraction here, the numerator stays at 1, and the denominator increases without bound or gets larger and larger. And therefore, this fraction actually approaches the value of zero.
it approaches zero, but never actually reaches zero. So because this fraction approaches zero, but never reaches zero, f of x will never have the function value of negative five, or y will never be negative five. And the same thing is true as x approaches negative infinity, this fraction still approaches zero, but never reaches a value of zero. So once again, f of x does never take on the value of negative five, which is the reason why negative five is not in the range of the given function. So the range of the given function is all real numbers where y does not equal negative five. Using interval notation, we'd have the open interval from negative infinity to negative five union, the open interval from negative five to infinity. Let's also sketch this horizontal line on the coordinate plane. Now let's go ahead and graph the given function on the coordinate plane here. Before we do this, going back to the graphing calculator, notice how there is a break in the graph at y equals negative five, which is the reason why negative five is not in the range of the given function. Let's select two convenient points from the table of values to make our graph on the coordinate plane. So let's press second graph for the table, and let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit. Let's plot the point negative three comma negative four and the point negative five comma negative six. So negative three, negative four is here. Negative five, negative six is here. That's really all we need because we know this piece of the graph is going to approach the asymptotes as well as this piece. So this part might look something like this. And this part of this piece looks something like this. I hope you found this helpful.